Hello everyone, welcome back to Phoenix Wright's Ace Attorney. Uh, I'm just gonna... Yeah, let's, uh, let's leave the music a little bit back. Hello everyone, welcome to the Adoran region. I'm your host, Adoran himself, and this is Phoenix Wright, the Ace Attorney series. We're just gonna start off from where we last left off. Um, if you are interested in the previous episode, you're confused. Where did I go? How did this happen? I thought you already did this. All of that is explained in the previous episodes. There is a playlist in the description below. If you're interested in the channel and the way that everything is working, why not subscribe? Leave a like, comment, talk to me. Uh, friends are cool. And uh, with that rousing statement of encouragement, let us go from the save point. I am actually going to adjust the... that there. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so, it has been a little bit uh, since I last played, so it does take it needs a second. Let me just review what we did last time. Yeah, okay. So I think we ought to let's go to Fanko's law office, see if anything new has happened here. Hmm. Looks like Detective Gumshoe has gone home. The police are still keeping themselves busy in the chief's office. No one has time to talk to me. Guess I'll head out. Alright, so I guess, um, nothing is here. Uh, we can go to Grossberg's or the Gatewater Hotel. I think we're supposed to go to the Gatewater Hotel. I'm gonna go to Grossberg's because of that fact. Hi, let's talk. Um, I don't think I presented stuff to you last time. Can I share with you... Oh, I have the phone. Um, I present it to you. Does this do anything to you? Very sorry, but I've got nothing to say regarding this matter. Okay, great. Um, yeah, let's just head back to the hotel. I think I'm just kind of wasting my time right now. Uh, let's go to the hotel. Ooh, the bellboy. Okay. Um, good afternoon, sir. Uh, excuse me, you are? I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. How? Are, why are we in the room, then? Like, I... Logically speaking, I understand, you know, there's no point in drawing a hallway, but... Illogically speaking. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Bonsoir, monsieur. Please stay as long as you'd like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, wait, no, hey, wait, wait, wait. Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Oh, he thinks that I'm with... Oh, no. Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a little bit. I almost forgot. God, you came back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White, a Blue Corp, phoned. Oh, uh, right, sure. Mr. White, a Blue Corp. Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Maya and Mia's mother. I said that backwards, but... Could it be a coincidence? Hmm. Intriguing. So there's evidence to suggest that the guy that we're looking for is the guy dealing with... Okay, okay. I want to know if this stuff is here still. Someone must be staying with her. Yeah, okay. Um... The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Fayenko Law Office building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. Uh, for the most part, I think this is pretty much uh, the same thing as last time. The only thing is, last time, uh, I couldn't click on this. Now, however... And here I am thinking uh, the flowers are fake as expected. I know some flowers and tulips, but that's about the extent of my floral knowledge. Yeah, you said that last time. I'm trying to click on this. 
There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside. Huh? What do we have here? A wiretap. Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? Let's add that to the court record. There is definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this, I know it. Why are you sounding like a news reporter? Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you know what I mean. Wait, who am I talking to? Oh, bellboy. Still there? Oh, time to scram. I look forward to tangling with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. Haha. <laughs> To be continued. Okay, well, had I known I was this close to the end last time, I probably would have continued. Uh, would I like to save my adventure? I would. If you'll give me just a second, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, yeah, let's save the adventure. September 7th, 10 a.m., District Courtroom, courtroom number one. Alright, it's, uh, us and our friend, Edgeworth. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. Alright, uh, I need an Edgeworth voice. Uh, let's see. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor, the prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Here he is. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. I swear, Gumshoe's voice changes every segment, so... Um... Sir! My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir! I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir! Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. I think I eventually settled into like an army sergeant. So I'm going to go something somewhere. Interesting music. I don't think we've heard this one in the playthrough yet. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. Hmm. They're still calling it a statue, though. What one's added to the court records? That's cool. Now, detective. Y yes sir You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Witness testimony, my face arrest this time of good old Gumshoe. As soon as the phone came calling in... I don't know what... I <laughs> shouldn't All right. Um, as soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross examination. Y yes, Your Honor. Cross examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whew. 
Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What? What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and present to the impress the witness on every detail. Ooh, I like the style of this. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. You know what, Maya? I know I've been calling you all right, but you're all right. It worked lots of times. Heh. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's old tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Let's go. Haha. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not going to read it again. Um, you guys heard it initially. But I will press them on every single thing, because I'm a 100% completionist, or I attempt to be, at least. Um, Hold it! Who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay. I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. There were two people there already. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right. Um, that's the wrong voice. Right, I would say it's about three minutes. Uh, that's, that's pretty fast. I was kind of hoping you guys weren't good. Our motto this month is quick response, as opposed to other months. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So, tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Yes, sir. Uh, us two. Are you... <laughs> this is a terrible... Are you absolutely sure it was us? Maybe it was my stunt double. Dun, dun, dun. Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like, like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Haha. <laughs> well, he does have a point about her, but me? Spiky hair. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. Hold it! Why is that? What's your reason? Oh, well, that just doesn't why we have a witness account describing her. Hold on just one second. Y y yeah. If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? what? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. She isn't. Then what color is she? Well, I, I guess she... Yeah, exactly my point. She is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm. I guess person can have its advantages. Hmm. Yes. Bruh. Insert bruh meme here. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir, man, d d dude, uh, pr God, g great guy. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. I'll see your testimony again. Okay, so I'm not 100% completionist because I think there were more texts after that, but... After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Yeah, mother, mother, whisper, whisper. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Get him. Case closed. I'm walking away. Mic drop. Let's go. I'm, I'm leaving. Okay, no, I can't actually leave. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor. Why did you testify? I... I feel disappointed in myself, because that was a perfect 
opportunity for like a, a hard judge of sound and didn't do it. All right, let me retry that. Ahem. Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I know, I'm I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir, dude. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin this cross-examination. Oh, you do not want to get on the judge's bad side, it seems. Let's try this. After securing the suspect, examined it. Hold it! Were they your eyes? Okay. Um, and did you find any evidence? No, oh, no, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen. I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this one. You found the memo. Hold it! Just because you found it next to the body doesn't make it... Doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Ho, ho, ho. Then who did write it? Smarty pants. I got him. Who, um... The killer, Miss May. I did. Um... The killer. I'm gonna go with that. The, the the killer! Anyone can see that. Huh. You're saying the killer wrote her own name. Buddy, please. No, that's not it. She was framed. She didn't do it. Look at her. She doesn't seem like a person that could kill anyone at all. It's Maya Faye. Objection! Hold on, that's right. Hello, Edgeworth, with that wonderful sounded voice. Objection. Hold on. That's a case. Where's your evidence? Uh... <laughs> I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths. Gosh darn it, I feel like I'm stumbling over words. It's disappointing. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Oh great, I'm getting ganged up on. Well, detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. Oh, the word Maya was written clearly in black. Do you have proof it was Mia who wrote that? Of course I do, pal. But how? Sounds pretty confident that this might not be good. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. Hold it. Wait a minute. What kind of tests were these again? Huh? What kind? Uh, well, I heard they take the, um, little bits in the blood, the, uh, the hemo, hemo, hermo, goblins, hobgob, uh, hermogobla, bobble, uh, <laughs> sounds like an Eminem rap right here. Hermogobla, bobble, and snapping through the cobbling. I refuse to testify. Okay, no, I'm stuck. I refuse to testify on this matter, pal. I'm no expert on blood tests. Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. Th th thanks, pal. I mean, your honor, sir, pal, dude. Detective Gumshoe. Y yeah I look forward to your next evaluation. I should you. Oh. Well, that was a mess. Um. Right, where was I? Uh, also there was blood found on the victim's finger. Hold it! On... Oh, that's actually... That's, that's actually a good question by Phoenix. Um, if he knows which hand Mia my, writes with. On which hand was the bloody finger, detective? The right hand. Hmm. She was right-handed. <laughs> nice try, pal. Uh-oh. I guess it wasn't too hard to see what I was getting at there. All right, before she died, the victim... Okay, hold up. Hold up. That's a bold claim to stay. Detective Gumshoe. Do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie, Detective. What is this, some sort of video game? This is real life. Ooh. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess. I haven't heard of many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Objection! Stop right there. <laughs> The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. You didn't say anything, Edward. Order! Order! Didn't go so well. That's, that's right, what he said. 
Before she died, the victims wrote the killer's name in blood. Wait, is that it? That's his whole testimony. Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. Okay. So we have to present something. Um... I think I know what it is, but I'm gonna go through these really quickly. Just to see... Yeah, okay. So I think what it is, if you read the description here, the time of death is 9-5 at 9 o'clock p.m. Cause a single blunt form of trauma. Death was instantaneous. Now, instantaneous death means that they can't write the message. Yeah, I was written clearly, bud. But I found a victim. Before she died, the killer wrote the... Yeah, the victim wrote the killer's name. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't test me here. Objection! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying. What? what This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, Detective. B backwards The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But No butting your way out of this one, detective. Don't test me, boy. I got a wiggly tough on my side. Bet. Let's go. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Objection! Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? I keep going British, he's not supposed to be. Um... I think it was the... Day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... The autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. It used to be like a Kaiba voice. Also, this is the meme. The autopsy report is outdated. Gosh darn it, Edworth. What? what? A second autopsy was reported. Maybe I should just make him Kaiba. So I have to start every sentence with Yugi. A second autopsy report was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a bunt up. I'm gonna restart that sentence. I apologize for you guys hearing all my mess ups in this. But it sounds weird that the music cuts in and out. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. N no way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write down Maya. That is all. Thank you for this wonderful presentation of a Kaiba Corp. Investment strategy, I don't know I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. <laughs> Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? I'm a sham. The detective's a sham. I'm gonna go your sham. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. Excuse me, he and I go back. Um, slight spoilers, I suppose. I apologize for that. He and I go back, though. You wanna go? Come on. Come on, one-hit wonder. Let's go. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court instead. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Auntie's your report updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. So what part of her is innocent, may I ask? 
Some kind of anime looking. Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from one ton winking. Aw, yes, your honor. Oh, uh, this is not good. He's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Except maybe Edgeworth, Edgeworth out here like, I don't care. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like, in my hotel room? <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay & Co. law offices? Mm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. The witness's account, testimony. Unfortunately for everyone watching, this is where the episode ends. I'm afraid we'll hear all about April May and her wonderful self next time. So, until then, thank you very much for supporting the Adoran region in any way, shape, or form that you do. And until next time, take care. Come on, big boy, don't you want to try something? I literally have no care whatsoever. You could go fly a kite for all I care about. <laughs>